Hey everyone, welcome back to FreeThink's Progress Report. I'm Nick and I've got some news about what's moving forward in the world. Every month it seems like the COVID pangolin emerges from its burrow only to see its shadow and declare another six weeks of quarantine. But things are starting to change and people are beginning to make plans about how to get back to normal. What'll it take for you to feel like you can go back to your normal routine? We spoke with Dr. Paul Romer, a Nobel Prize winning economist who thinks that the key is testing. Lots and lots of testing. So for people who aren't familiar with your work, I wonder if you could just introduce yourself. My name's Paul Romer. I'm an economist at New York University. And you recently published this roadmap to reopening America responsibly. I'm curious, how do you compare yours to other plans or proposals and what sets yours apart? I published a roadmap that had a single focus on expanding tests and using this strategy of test and isolate to make it safe for people to go back to work. We need to get up to 20 to 30 million tests a day. And so how do you get to scale like that? You just start working, you know, one step at a time. You roll out new laboratories, you find new ways to do the tests, and you use those tests first on people like doctors and nurses, EMTs who are already um, exposed. Um, and part of how you we're gonna make this more widely available is to shift to things like a saliva sample instead of using a swab. There's already an approved process for using saliva. So you just spit in a little tube, send it off and, and, and get it tested. So we need the sampling method. We need the labs to process those samples. And then we need ways to get people to start using these sampling methods and sending them in. All of those things could be scaled up very dramatically. What do you think are the key obstacles that we're facing right now in terms of producing that volume of tests? Well, the first obstacle is, is that it's against the law to produce a test unless you get uh, permission from the FDA. We, we painted ourselves into a terrible corner here. And, and we know there are people in universities, they've said things like, ah, you don't need to use swabs. You can just use saliva here. We showed it. Or, you know, the, those reagents that are out of supply, turns out there's some other reagents you can use. You know, you, you don't have approval to do it, but it would work if you did. So people in university campuses have figured all of this out. Why don't we just let them do that? Obviously the key feature is testing. And I'm, one of the things that occurs to me as I read that is how, how realistic is it for people to expect that they would be tested that recently, you know? Like for yeah, example, a lot I, of people know, don't I've, even... I've decided, I've, I've gone through this conversation so many times, I am just not even gonna start there on, oh, we don't think we can do it. We produce 350 million cans worth of soda every day because the value of soda, which I don't drink, but the value to some people is worth more than the cost of producing the soda. So the economy produces them. The tests would be worth an enormous amount right now. So we just gotta make it possible for the economy to produce them. End of story. Are there parallels? I mean, it's, you know, the last pandemic that I think I most people have recollection of is AIDS. And I'm curious, are there lessons to be learned from how the HIV ec epidemic was handled or not handled in terms of how we do handle this one? Well, there was a program called Test and Treat for dealing with uh, the, the spread of HIV, which involved getting people to go get tested. And then if you got tested to, to, to get treated with these antiretrovirals, this was ultimately a relatively successful way to control the, the spread of the, the virus. Um, fortunately with this, you know, this new uh, coronavirus, it's much easier to manage. You just have to go into isolation for a relatively short period of time. If there's some antiretrovirals that will treat it too, well, so much the better. The only other problem is we have to recognize that this thing can spread very widely. So you need to be ready to test a lot more people. It's not just a small community that are candidates for being tested. It's pretty much everybody is a candidate for being tested and then isolated if, if they happen to, to carry it. It might seem unbelievable right now that we'll be getting tested twice a month for COVID-19. But then again, on September 10th, 2001, no one would have believed that we'd all be taking off our shoes just to get onto an airplane. Things change and we tend to get used to them pretty quickly. So what are the biggest changes you anticipate as we start to put together something closer to our normal lives? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for checking in with us. We'll see you soon. Make sure you get tested if you can for everything. Too much? Too much.